You know, there are American heroes who don't like this idea. Neil Armstrong, Gene Cernan have both testified against commercial space flight in the way that you're developing it. And I wonder what you think of that. I was very sad to see that uh, because those guys are, yeah. You know, those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. You know, I, I wish they would come and visit and, and see the hardware that we're doing here. And, and I think that would change their mind. They inspired you to do this, didn't they? Yes. And to see them casting stones in your direction. It's difficult. Did you expect them to cheer you on? So they're hoping they would. What are you trying to prove to them? What I'm trying to do is, is to make a, a significant difference in, in space flight and, and, and help make space flight accessible to, to almost anyone. And I, I, I would uh, hope for as much support in that direction as we, as we can receive. Yeah, 2008, we had the third consecutive failure of the Falcon 1 rocket for SpaceX. Tesla almost went bankrupt. We, we closed our financing round. 6 p.m. Christmas Eve, 2008. It was the last hour of the last day that it was possible. We would have gone bankrupt two days after Christmas otherwise. And I got divorced. That was like rough. Man, women has got issue there. I gave basically both SpaceX and Tesla from the beginning um, a probability of less than 10% of likely, likely to succeed. Uh, in the beginning, I wouldn't, actually wouldn't even let my friends invest because I didn't want to lose their money. I thought it was like, you know, I'd rather lose my own money. We, we almost did die at SpaceX, actually. So we, I budgeted for, for three flights. Um, I mean, technically, I, I did have a plan where I, I had, a, had, this, had the money from PayPal. I had like about 180 million from PayPal. And I thought, you know, I'll, I'll allocate half of that to SpaceX and Tesla and Silver City, and um, that should be fine. I'll have 90 million, like just lots, you know. Uh, but, but then what happened is um, things cost more and took longer than than I thought, so I had a choice of either put the rest of the money in or the companies are gonna die. Um, and it's like, so I, put, I ended up putting all the money in and, and borrowing money for rent from friends. When I was young, I, I, uh, I didn't really know what I was gonna do uh, when, I, when I got older. Um, people kept asking me and, and um, but, but then eventually I thought that the idea of inventing things would be, would be really cool. And uh, the, the reason I thought that was because um, I, I read a quote from Arthur C. Clarke which said that a, um, a sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And, and that's really true. Uh, if, you if you go back, say, 300 years, the things that we take for granted today uh, would be, you'd, you'd be burned at the stake for. Um, you know, being able to fly, um, that's crazy. Uh, being able to see over long distances, being able to communicate, having um, effectively with the internet uh, a, a, a group mind of sorts, um, and having access to all the world's information uh, instantly from almost anywhere on the earth. Um, this, is, this is stuff that, that really would be magic, it would be considered magic um, in, in times past. In fact, I think it actually goes beyond that because there are many things that we take for granted today that weren't even imagined. In, in times past. They weren't even in the realm of magic. So it actually goes, goes beyond that. So I thought, well, you know, if, if, if I can do some of those things, basically if, if, if I can advance technology, then that, that's like magic and that would be really cool. Um, and the, the, I always had sort of a slight existential crisis because I was trying to figure out what, what does it all mean? Like what's the purpose of things? And um, I came to the conclusion that if, if we can advance the this, this, the, the knowledge of the world, if we can do things that expand the scope and, and, and scale of consciousness, then we're better able to ask the right questions and become more enlightened, and, and that's really the only way forward. Even if you're, if you're the best the best, there's always a chance of failure. So I think it's important that you really like whatever you're doing. Um, if, if you don't like it, life is too short. If you like what you're doing, you think about it even when you're not working. I mean, you, you, it'll just... It, it's, it's something that your mind is drawn to. Um, and, and if you don't like it, you, you just really can make it work, I think. What kind of future do we want? Do we want a future where we are forever confined to one planet until some eventual extinction event, however far in the future that might occur? Um, or do we want to become a multi-planet species 
um, and, and then ultimately be out there among the stars and be among many planets, many star systems. And I think the latter is a far more exciting and inspiring future than the former. Mars is the next uh, natural step. Um, in fact, it's the only planet we really have a shot at, at establishing a self-sustaining city on. Once we do establish such a city, there will be a strong forcing function for the improvement of spaceflight technology that will then enable us to uh, establish colonies elsewhere in the solar system and ultimately extend beyond, the, beyond our solar system. What um, get, gets me more excited is, is the fact that this would be an incredible adventure. Mm. I mean, it would be like the greatest adventure ever. Mm. Mm. Um, and it, it would be exciting and inspiring. And there need to be things that excite and inspire people. Yeah. You have to be, you know, reasons why you get up in the morning. It can't just be solving problems. It's got to be, yeah, something, something great's going to happen in the future. It's really a mindset. You have to decide. We're going to try to do things uh, differently. Well, provided that they're better. You shouldn't do things differently just because they're different. They need to be different and better. Um, but I think you just have to sort of decide. Let's, let's think beyond the normal stuff and, and, um, and, and have an environment where that sort of thinking is encouraged and rewarded and where it's okay to fail as well because when you try new things you try this idea that idea <clears throat> well <clears throat> a large number of them are not going to work and that has to be okay if if if, any, if if every time somebody comes up with an idea that has to be successful you're not going to get people coming up with ideas SpaceX is alive by the skin of its teeth so is Tesla if, if, if things had just gone a little bit the other way it, both companies would be dead and I, and I had like one of the most difficult choices I've ever faced uh, in life was it was in 2008. I think I had uh, like a, maybe $30 million left, in, or $30 or $40 million left in 2008, and I had two choices. I could put it all into one company, and then the other company would definitely die, um, or split it between the two companies. And, but if I split it between the two companies, then both might die. Um, and you know, when you put your blood, sweat, and tears into creating something, building something, it's like a child. Am I going to let one starve to death? I couldn't bring myself to do it, so I, put, I, I split the money between the two. Fortunately, thank goodness, uh, they both came through. The odds of me coming into the rocket business, not knowing anything about rockets, not having ever built anything, I mean, um, I would have to be insane if I thought the odds were in my favor. Why even begin? Uh, when something is important enough, you do it even though the odds are not in your favor. How much of your personal fortune have you poured into this? A uh, hundred million dollars. A hundred million dollars yeah. into something that you did not believe would work at the beginning. Yes. I'm probably not the guy that most people would bet on. Um, <laughs> you, Who usually, wins? It's, it's, it's like a, a little kid fighting a bunch of sumo wrestlers. <laughs> usually the sumo wrestlers win. We're, you know, we're a little scrappy company. Every now and again, the little scrappy company wins. And I, I, I think this will be one of those times.